don't know what we're doing, but I don't know. I'm just I'm, I'm having a weird uh, nostalgia. It's like an '80s power song. You gotta fight stronger You gotta last longer Raw's over. WWE Raw's over. Hey, listen. The final boss, The Rock, was out there tonight. Great opening. Great ending. I like what they did all around. Michael Cole at one point during the match, he was like, Sokoa, Seth Rollins has taken out everybody. All Seth Rollins did was hit Sokoa in the head with a chair like seven times. And Michael Cole was like, he's taken out everybody. What the hell are you talking about, Cole? There were several issues tonight with commentary. Commentary was ridiculous tonight. It was very weird. Um, also, um, the WWE covered up Vince McMahon's commentary from WrestleMania 10 for that Snickers commercial, which really pissed me off, by the way. That very much pissed me off. It's one of the best WrestleManias and best commentary teams at a WrestleMania, and you blanked out Vince McMahon. Are you serious, bro? fucking stupid i i was on twitter if you're not at this point guys you gotta follow me on twitter because i can't show everything i can show you on youtube on i can show it on twitter and some of it on patreon as well but on on twitter especially you gotta be following me on twitter because if you're not here's my twitter link if you're not following me because i can it allows me to p break down some of these videos in real time if you if you want to see what i'm saying during the show i actually say it in video a lot of times and i tweet out the video so follow me on Twitter at Meta World Online, and it's at Meta World Online because I've been banned so many times. Um, check that out and follow me. Um, but obviously, be a patron on Patreon.com/slash The Grown Show. You'll get those updates there as well, and some other places also. Uh, AEW released a whole bunch of people. There's I have you know things I want to say about Raw tonight. Um, I um, we'll we'll go through some of it. And I also want to take the time really quickly to just to kind of laugh at all the all the fans who watched monetize this the other night. I just want to say, man, I got so many messages from people who said they were going to make sure that Jake DeMarco became the monetize this champion. And Jake DeMarco himself, Jake DeMarco himself said that uh, he had received, he was like, oh, yeah, it's going down. Like, all these people are supporting me. It's, it's going to be crazy. And I myself really wanted to win the belt back, but because Jake was coming back to the show, I said, well, I'm going to step aside and I'm going to really try not to do anything, to be honest, because I, I want to let Jake, you know, I'll let him do it. It's very predictable, I know, but I was going to let him do it. But you know what? Jake DeMarco, 10 points. Where were all the Jake DeMarco fans? What a bunch of fakes out there who made Jake think he was going to win. That's hilarious. Ten points for that miserable, sick bastard. Unbelievably funny. How about that, man? All that shit, all those years, people like, oh, Jake was so great. Uh. Yeah, okay. You barely showed up out of nowhere. And then on the top of that, when it came down for him to win a title, 10 points. 10 points for Jake DeMarco. How about that to all the people out there that said, oh, people like Jake more than Joe on his own show. <laughs> I beat Jake 40 to 10 the other night. I mean, Luke Rojas got $700 worth of stuff, 700 points or whatever it was. 
And then Jay Menace received over 200. Not counting the pot. He got over 200. Jake got 10. Jake got 10. A lot of fake people out there. Oh, I'm a big Jake DeMarco guy. Oh, we love Jake. Okay. Okay. Sure you do. I love it. What a, I, I love it. They were all called out the other night. It was fucking hilarious. Anyway, um, we're talking about the final boss. CM Punk also today uh, was in an interview. Um, I'm going to do a video on this tomorrow, but we are going to talk about it tonight. He, he just lambasted AEW uh, and Tony Khan. CM Punk just took a shit on Tony Khan today, and that was really funny to me. Love the way that the, the Raw started. Record-breaking crowd. That's crazy to say in 2024 that um, in Brooklyn that we could break some records, break some numbers even be in the conversation to talk about doing that, I think is pretty good for WWE. I thought the show, you know, lacked at times tonight, but what a strong beginning and finish, um, you know, that made it feel like, you know, you know, back in the Attitude Era, you know, there would be some shows where the opening was gr so great and the ending was great, but if you watch the whole show, eh, it wasn't the greatest, but the opening and ending were so great and awesome and fun that the show felt better than it really might have been. And, you know, I think that this is one of those examples of that here tonight. I thought they did pretty good. Um, but, yeah, all the Jakey crybabies. There's a lot of Jakey crybabies out there. Um, so, yeah, we, we really um, have had a weird week. I had a weird day today. I'm not going to be on here long, obviously. Um, this may be my last Raw review for a long time or ever. I don't know. We'll see. Um but this, this, I'm coming on here tonight only because Raw was in their go-home show for WrestleMania, and I knew it was going to be a big night. Um, but I am tired as hell. My, I had a pipe blow up today. Uh, my kitchen sink don't work or whatever. And uh, worked all day. Not a lot of sleep the other night. Easter on the red eye. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Hope everybody had a good time. I hope you all had a great weekend and the Easter Bunny stuff. If you did that, if you didn't do that, then I'm sorry you had to hear about it all weekend. Um, but uh, what what did you give Monday Night Raw tonight, guys? In the chat, what I want right now is for everybody to type in the chat. Out of ten, what did you think of Monday Night Raw? Let me know out of ten what you thought. I thought that Pat McAfee at times tonight didn't make any sense. I don't understand why why we revere Roman Reigns like we do. Oh, the GOAT, the man, he's so great. Why is Pat McAfee putting over Roman Reigns like a crazy person when he doesn't need to do that? Why not just say, man, the GOAT is here? You know, you could argue about the way he gets it done and the way things have gone here for Roman. No doubt about it, you know, it's he's done some sick, despicable stuff. But he is he is absolutely dominant, even when, you know, even if it's questionable. You know, but he didn't even, it's just like, wow, he's so amazing. Well, he cheats every match. I don't understand that. Why do they praise Roman like he's Tom Brady? You know what I mean? And, oh, there's a lot of jokes to be made there. Oh, Tom Brady cheated, you know, the, the fleet of football. and the club. But, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, why Why would they, if, if he really was a cheater, why would you praise him? I mean, do we praise, do we praise everybody who's a winner in sports who cheats? We ever done that? I'm trying to think. Usually they get kicked out of the sport. Maybe we do though. Alex Rodriguez, David Ortiz, steroids. Right? Praise them. So maybe we do praise them. Maybe that's Pat McAfee's thing. Hey, I'm Pat McAfee. I love sports. Even if they cheat, I love it. I don't know. It's kind of weird. So Pat McAfee was all over the place with commentary tonight. There were times. There were times that Pat McAfee and Michael Cole were actually really good on commentary tonight. And then there were other times tonight where they, honestly, they both sounded like Kevin Patrick. There was a couple of moments they sounded like Kevin Patrick. And I already, I give you, I have the examples. I'm not just making this stuff up. You know what I mean? I'm not just making this stuff up. I, I posted on Twitter, listen. Taking out everybody? What the hell are you... What is Cole talking about? Taking out everybody? He's only... How is he taking out everybody? Rollins is, is throwing chairs 
at Solo Sokoa. He's not doing anything else. He's throwing chairs at Solo Sokoa. That's all he's doing. And Michael Cole goes, he's taking out everybody. What the fuck are you talking about? He's taking out Sokoa. Only Sokoa. In the head. I wonder if Pat McAfee saying he got hit in the head gave Michael Cole some kind of PTSD and he didn't know what he was saying because he was like, oh, my God, don't say head. Which they were chair shots to the head, which, which, which I don't care because he blocked them and it, why can't you do that? Taking out everybody. No, he's not. He's not taking out everybody. He's only taking out Solo Sokoa. Why are you saying that he's taking out everybody, Michael Cole? Like, is Kevin Patrick back on commentary? There were several of these times tonight where he said things like this. Also, another funny part, if you guys missed it, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Um, this, this, By the way, this is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Adam Pierce is in the back. And they're trying to pull Becky off of Rhea Ripley. And one of the security guards is burying his head into her breasts. And he, she's supposed to walk, get away so they can continue the segment. And Adam Pierce rips this guy's hair out of his head, bro. It's the funniest thing. In a second. Watch this. Watch him. Watch him grab his hair. See that? Get Becky out of here. He rips the guy's hair, like, out of his head. <laughs> Look at him ripping the security guard's hair. <laughs> he grabs his hair. He does it. And he pulls his head out of the frame. He's like, Ugh! because the guy was not supposed to be doing that and be there anymore. It was ridiculous. Like, and he rips his head off right of his head, bro. <laughs> And then eventually, watch security guard guy to chest. Get Becky out of here, he's yelling. While they're trying to push on Rhea. Now, to me, the guy doesn't know he's yelling at him. He's thinking, like, get Becky out of here to the other guys. I'm holding Ripley back. But the guy rips the guy's head off. Go watch it. I'm not going to show you much more of it because I don't want to get a copyright. But my God, bro, he, like, rips his hair out of his head almost. It's the funniest thing I've seen in a long time, bro. I was like, get Becky out of here. Get her out. And he's like trying to tell that. And that but that guy's got his head buried into. I almost wonder if Adam Pierce is like, dude, what are you doing? Because he puts his face and head into Rhea Ripley's tits. It's weird, bro. It's really funny. But yeah, he, that was one of the funniest things I've seen in a while, dude. Get Becky out of here. Guys, if you want to donate to the show, you want the Monday Night Raw review to be lit. Feel free to use the link pinned to the top of the channel. Use it up there. By the way, everybody hates Jake DeMarco. Jake DeMarco, 10 points, huh? Jakey Two Belts, back from being sick all those years, huh? 10 points for Jakey Two Belts. How about that? All the people that said they were going to donate to Jake, all the people that said they were going to help out Jake, 10, 10 points for Jake. 40 for me. How about that? Jake has a bunch of lying friends. <laughs> oh, my God. Go away again, bro. Get off the show. What a bunch of hilarious. Oh, my God, bro. Jake. Oh, I've got a lot of people who are, gonna, who are supporting me. I'll monetize this. Kiss that dream goodbye, brother. Just like ever having real teeth again. Kiss that goodbye, too. Uh. Nine bucks for a fuck. Someone donated nine. I'm getting hard. I got nine inches inside of your wife. Nine bucks. I'm shooting my semen. All right, Joe and Armstrong, what's up? I got more to say, too. I got something else for you guys. There's a lot of stuff going on. The crowd was so bipolar tonight, they cheer The Rock and Roman, then boo him. The Rock wasn't playing whipping Cody and Seth like slaves. 
Yeah. Well, also, they they did whip them like slaves. There's a lot of weird racist connota- connotations here. Like, you know, they're, boy, like we whooped your boy. You see what we did to your boy? They're calling Cody Rhodes boy over and over again. Boy, 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 boy. Like a very thin, like weird thing. Like if it roles are reversed, it would be definitely considered racist, obviously. And then they're whipping Cody. Yeah, it's just it's very reverse. Like there's something going on there. Some kind of subliminal like whip the white guy. I don't know. Like, <laughs> but no, I'm I'm kidding. Of course. I mean, like this has been done forever in the wrestling business. As it's just funny to think about. It's not what it is though. But it's funny. But no, it's it was good. It was so good. It was everything was good. I knew Cody was going to be there. I've been saying it all night. Cody's coming out at the end, 100. percent Everybody, everybody seemed to know it though in the chat. Everybody knew it. Um, though Cody would be there because they they spent so much time being like Cody's not here. He's not medically cleared. Cody's not going to be here. Like oh, Cody's not going to be here. They probably said it one too many times that Cody wasn't going to be here. They probably just should have said it at the beginning of the show. Maybe they could have said it again, or 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 maybe they could have said something like. Cody's not going to be here at the beginning of the show. And then in the middle of the show, maybe Cole could have said something like, I hope at some point we can get a response from Cody Rhodes, who's at home via a Skype chat or via a, a face Facebook Live or whatever you call it, FaceTime or something like that. We're working on trying to get a reaction from Cody Rhodes via a FaceTime for, the, for tonight's show. We'll see if we can get that. Um, I don't know. Maybe they could have done something like that, but it really, they could have just said it at the beginning and that's all I would have needed to know. That would have tipped me off even that I think he's still going to be here, but it would have still, it would have made me forget a little bit, but they said it like 5,000 times all throughout the night. Oh, Cody's not going to be here. By the way, how about this weirdo fuck who was recording Seth Rollins while Seth Rollins was standing on the top of the ramp? Did anybody else notice this? Dude. Some of the people in the crowd were awkward as hell standing next to Seth Rollins when he was delivering that pro- promo, but none more weird than the four-eyed kid who was standing next to Seth Rollins and the whole time was taping him, like with his camera, like he wasn't like there. Like the kid was acting like Seth wasn't right in front of him. Like he was like... Like he was the cameraman. Dude, he was... He was acting like he was the cameraman, dude. It was, like, so awkward. Like, I, I got to give it to Rollins. If CM Punk had been there, I think CM Punk would have gotten annoyed. CM Punk would have said something like, hey, hey, or, like, something like that, or, like, bumped him or bu- or moved away or been like, yeah, I get it, bro. You got a camera. Can you, like, you're right in front of me. Like it's something. Like he, or, like, he would have knocked it out. He would have swung the microphone and knocked his camera out of his hand. Like, I give it to Rollins was he didn't respond to it whatsoever, even though I found it to be very awkward. Listen, I get it. You are standing there and he's in your you're in your space, still in your space. But you know what this reminded me of was the Covington Trump supporter kids who were standing in the rally and the Native American instigators came up to them and they got right in their face. And like it was weird. Like that's this kind of reminded me of that weird image. Um, and then they got sued for a million, billion, like hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever. Oh no, that was CNN that got sued. I forgot. Like, it's like, bro, the kid was like, like, like in his own world with Seth Rollins, like, like Seth Rollins was a fish in a bowl and this guy was going right up to the bowl to be like, let me see, let me take a little shot of that. Now last week. I mean, it was it was weird how close he was. Like, I know that he was in his own space technically, but it's like, it was so, like it was so weird, bro. He was right next to him. Like, <laughs> like you, instead of videotaping it, why don't you just why wouldn't you why wouldn't you stand next to Seth and watch him and then watch the ring, and then and then be like, yeah, Seth, let's go and like get in the moment and shit. Because you're going to be on video. You're going to be able to go home and see it on video forever. It's going to be on video forever. But instead of you like being pumped up next to Seth and talking, and maybe Seth would have high-fived you or something. But instead of that, you're just like... <laughs> it's just, this kid, if, unless he becomes a future filmmaker, then I understand. Like He was like, oh my God, this is the money shot. This is the money shot right here. 
Look at Seth Rollins' ear canal. Holy shit. I think I see wax in there. No, no, there's no wax. There's no wax at all, bro. I mean, dude, the security did go after a couple of people, but they couldn't. They didn't do anything to this guy. But it was just funny, man. You crossed the line. No, I won't. Every shot that camera is like that's right next to his face. That is the weirdest shot. Like you don't need to stick the camera in his face. You're right there. <laughs> On a fight to fight. It's <laughs> the whole thing. Look at the shot when they cut back. They cut back to set. Look at this arena of people. And look at the kid. <laughs> look at this guy. I can't get over it, dude. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's really funny. I mean, it was. it's, it's awkward that he's facing him completely. You know, like, I don't know why. It's just awkward to me. It's It was driving me nuts the whole time. I was like, this is so weird. Like, And you could even film it, like, with, like, like a bit of subterfuge. Like, you could take your phone and kind of, like, lean, hold it out here, like, over here. You could, you could have actually stuck your camera out over here and videoed you and Seth together and been like, yeah, let's go, Seth. Let's go and like videotaped yourself. That I sort of like would understand even like I'd be like, all right, yeah, you wanted to, you're in a video now with Seth, even though you're on camera with him. Why do you need to do that? But like it was just like, <laughs> like dude, it was so more like I'm right in your face with this. It was like he was doing an ear test. Like let me check your ear canal, Seth. Let me check your ear canal, bro. Let me see what's in there. Let's see what's in there, Seth. I give it to Seth, man, for just completely no selling that. Like, look at again. Look at how close it is. Where is it? There it is. There it is. There it is. Look at look at the camera. It's right here. I mean, what are you zooming into his teeth? What kind of phone is that? Is this a new type of zoom? I'm not aware of. Look at this. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I I mean it just that just that just killed me though. The crowd was hot for this moment though. They were hot for the beginning. I liked the beginning. It was I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. They got everybody on the show. Um you know a lot of the other stuff. I I, I found the Sami Zayn. I thought the Sa I I get what they're doing, and there's a part of me that really loved the Sami Zayn segment with Chad Gable, the like pep talk Rocky type of scene that they did. There's a part of me that likes it, you know, but there's a big part of me that thought it was fucking cheesy and horrible. Like God, was it cringy, horrible? Like you gotta be good, man. Like. Dude, I want Chad Gable to wrestle somebody. I don't even... I don't know why, but I don't like Sami Zayn right now. I, I don't like him. I'm over it. I'm either over him... I, you know, I don't know. I think it's that I'm over him right now. I'm just not into Sami Zayn that much. And the whole thing about, like, believe in yourself... I just... I don't know why, but I'm not buying it. I don't want to buy it. I don't buy it. I don't care. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's because I know Sami is, like, a prick in real life. I don't know. But I, I just don't like Sami Zayn right now that much. I like him in the ring usually when he wrestles and stuff. But there's just something that I don't... I want to see Chad Gable wrestle. But Chad Gable's doing the sidekick thing. and I, I don't know. I just thought that whole segment was very cheesy. Like really bad. I didn't like it. Some people... But it was well done in many ways, but I don't like it. I mean... Explain that, I guess. I don't know. But it's just how I feel. We did monetize this Saturday night, man, and Jake 
Jake DeMarco. Oh, we're all going to support Jake. We're all coming out to support Jake. Ten points for Jake DeMarco. Ten points for Jake DeMarco. That was hilarious. Man. Good God Almighty. I uh I hope you guys can leave your uh hit a like hit the like button first of all. If you guys can please hit the like button, that would help out a bit. I'm gonna go to the donations in a second. We're gonna see what you guys have to say. I'm gonna talk about CM Punk's uh interview in a few minutes. AEW released ten people today. About time, uh, CM Punk basically exposes Tony Khan for the, you know, horrible leader that apparently Tony Khan apparently is. We've tried to reach out to Tony Khan several times to ask him some questions, and uh, he has no response. Um, what else about tonight? I think I covered so much already. I covered Michael Cole making no sense at times. Pat McAfee making no sense at times. Pat McAfee and Michael Cole had some good moments too tonight on commentary, but they had some bad moments too. thought it was weird. Um, the women's match was a, was a piece of shit match. It was horrible. The women did terrible. I'm sorry to say. The women went out there tonight and the crowd was dead. And the women were dead as well. The women were as dead as the crowd was. Um, I did like Gunther dragging out Chad Gable and beating the shit out of everybody. That was fine with me. I liked that part. But I thought the Sami Zayn, um, Gable, Rocky moment was just fucking terrible. Um, and then the, the promotion of the, the Lil Wayne or whatever it was was so obvious. It was weird. And then WWE literally did a promo for Snickers in which they talked about Brett the Hitman Hart and 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 uh, Owen Hart, and they proceeded to only play the commentary of Jerry the King Lawler. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself in your fucker ass. Fuck yourself, Snickers. Suck a fucking dick. You know something, Snickers? You fucking, you fucking cunts. I know something that rhymes with Snickers, by the way. Hey, motherfuckers, guess what? Hershey's motherfucker. Hershey's motherfucker. How about that, Snickers? Fuck yourself. Oh, fuck yourself and die. You motherfuckers. One of the ba best fucking commentary teams ever in the history of this business. Vince McMahon, Jerry the King Lawler, and you cut it out and you play only the heels commentary of give him his dues, sing his praises. And you blanked out Vince, and then you edited out all the Vince commentary and only used Jerry the King Lawler, the color commentator, for this wonderful, crazy wrestling match. But you deleted Vince McMahon from the commentary in the commercial? You couldn't have the commentary? You, I, I can understand if you muted the part where Jerry said, give him his praises, McMahon. That part, I can understand. You want to blank out the name McMahon? Fine. Go ahead and do that, I guess, even though he created all of this. He fucking created all of this. But for Christ's sake, you actually edited out all the man's fucking commentary in the fucking match. Welcome back, Simone Biles. Like, what the fuck? Did I fucking watch? This Hungry for Mania moment is brought to you by Snickers. Maybe you just need a Snickers. Maybe. Snickers satisfies. Maybe you need. Maybe you need a fucking Snickers. If you are so fucked that you have to edit out a man's commentary because he took a shit on some fucking gold digger's head. Huh? Maybe you need a fucking Snickers. How about this? Your Snickers bar looks like the shit that that fucking genius shit on her fucking head. Growing up, my favorite WrestleMania moment of all time would have to be Owen Hart versus Bret Hart WrestleMania 10. History is going to be made today. 
Yeah, it's one of my favorite matches too. And guess what? You know what I loved about it? Jerry the King Lawler's and Vince McMahon's commentary. Their story was a simple story, brother versus brother. And yes, I'm a little bit biased because they're both family, but it was such an incredible match. And anybody that ever wants to get into the industry or wants to come work in WWE as a WWE superstar, I always say, watch that match. This is going to be a problem. Bret Hart versus Owen Hart, WrestleMania 10. It's truly one of the greatest WrestleMania matches of all time, and it took place in my favorite arena in the world, Madison Square Garden. Oh, yeah! Power! Give me this view! Sing his praises! The world is in shock right now! Yeah, where's Vince McMahon's commentary? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to Snickers headquarters. I'm going to go to fucking Snickers headquarters and I'm going to go into the HR department and I'm going to look up every single one of the Snickers employees, all the male employees at Snickers. Huh? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Snickers headquarters and I'm going to go look up every employee, every male employee's wife. And I'm going to find their wives. And I'm going to stick a fucking Twix in all their pussies. How about that? Snickers, you fucking scumbags. You want to delete history? What's the point in doing anything? What's the point in doing fucking anything if at some point you could be erased? 364 people watching now. Fuck off. I had a fucking horrible week. I hate everything. Fuck you. Shit bomb. You couldn't make your top baby faces look any weaker than they did. Even with Triple H in charge, they still can't book baby faces to save their lives. You couldn't make the top baby faces look any weaker than they did. Well, um, no, you know, Copsey uh, DeFille, I mean, I, I guess a lot of the, um, here's the thing. You Usually, right, usually before WrestleMania, if you got people that are going to go over, that are going to win, uh, usually the heel beats the shit out of them, right? Normally, normally. I think there's a couple of exceptions. And if it, and guys, let me know if I'm wrong or not. Let me know if I'm wrong or not. But di- but didn't Stone Cold Steve Austin didn't he do the beer bath on the corporation and the rock right before WrestleMania and then he won at WrestleMania, I think, right? So there are a few times where the face gets one over on the heels before he wins at WrestleMania or something like that. But normally Normally, the heels make a huge statement before, you know, and that's and that's not just when they're going to lose, but it's also, you know, when you really want to get the crowd hyped for the big match. You know, you don't want the baby face. Usually you don't want the baby face to get one big thing over on the bad guy before they go into the match. It's usually not how you want to do it. So therefore, you expect to see mostly the heels look strong before the big event. So they're really not going against the grain that much. And almost every time, if the face gets over, gets one over, they lose. And if the heel gets one over, they lose. That's about 85% of the time when those things happen, that's the result. And so what you're going to see is probably out of all the heels that have been getting one over on the faces this past week now, tonight and Friday, um, most likely 85% of them will lose because they they looked strong going into mania, but they'll lose and the good guy will prevail. So, you know, that's really what you usually see. And um, I appreciate you guys hitting that like button. This could be one of my last Monday Night Raw reviews. So I appreciate everybody being here and hanging out. 
By the way, it's not some April Fool's joke. I don't say that because April. Like I, un- I unsubscribed from like four people today. I unsubscribed from four people. Every single piece of shit that put out a video today that was like, it's time, guys. Or I'm quitting or I quit YouTube or why I'm leaving YouTube. Ha <laughs> ha, April Fools, I'm not really leaving YouTube. Ha 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 unsub on Patreon. You're not funny. Kill your family. That's what happened today. That's what happened today. Oh, you're really funny. <laughs> like 900 other YouTubers did the same thing. <laughs> How about deliver me some actual content I want to hear? How about do your review on the thing I like you doing it on? How about give your opinion on the thing I like you giving your opinion on? And don't come on here cutesy like the 70 million other YouTubers and go, I'm quitting or I quit or it's time. (laughs) It's time. It's time for your wife to get her period and me to scoop it all up, put it in a glass jar, mix it together, put an egg in it and serve it to your kids. That's right. You just drank mommy's period blood, kids. (laughs) Is that funny? Is that funny? (laughs) April Fools. (laughs) Fucking retards. Anyway, uh, click the like button. If you guys like the show, super chat me down below because I need money to pay for things. And um, I'm a piece of shit loser. Also, uh, Streamlabs is pinned to the top if you want to do that. Don't forget there's a new $24 Jake DeMarco donation. Use that to donate to show him how much more you like me than him since it doesn't count to him uh, for monetize this in his championship. <laughs> Jakey two belts. Let's play some more donations because that's all that matters, really. Shit bum. Big day in pro wrestling this raw ending. The it cuts. Showing Owen Hart footed on Raw, then next segment drew by a casket and CM Punk interview. What? Big day in pro wrestling, this Raw ending, the AEW cuts. Yeah, 10 cuts from AEW. We're going to talk about it. Showing Owen Hart footage. Yes, exactly. That was definitely different. That's why I thought maybe they were using Jerry the King Lawler's commentary because he was a heel at the time at WrestleMania 10 and he was really putting over Owen because he was a heel. It's such good commentary, good match. Uh, oh, yeah, we didn't talk about the Drew promo. The Drew, oh, my God, the Drew promo was great. Uh, Haystacks Monet. Haystacks, thank you so much, my friend, for becoming a $5 shit bum, you dirty little bitch. Haystacks, thank you so much, man. Yeah, Drew, Drew's promo was fire, dude. That was another good moment tonight. And unfortunately, you know, the promo, it was like 30, like I was a minute. The Drew promo was only a minute long. But again, that that was one of the best things about the entire night. Where where was it? He was like, look into my eyes. What do you see? Phil's got no match in Philly or something like that. It was funny. And the music was like really like... It was like fucking like the... It was like scary ass music. I don't know. Where is it? Oh my God, it was good. And listen, I thought the Chad Gable vignette with... uh, Sammy, uh, whatever the fuck, Sammy Zayn was was really well produced and everything, and yeah, it was like Rocky and all that shit. But like, even though it was well produced and stuff, I just found it to be cheesy. I didn't care about what they were doing with it, you know. Um, where is the Seth promo? Oh, here it is. The shots, the editing, the music, um, very cinematic. I really liked it. Really liked it. Taking down the bloodline is bigger than us. Hard to believe WrestleMania 10 was 30 years ago that that happened. My cousin George dropped off WrestleMania for me on tape uh, the day after so I could watch it because I missed it live. Um, I'll never forget it. I still have this to this day, have that VHS tape. And I was so pumped to see WrestleMania 10. Um, Crazy. And yeah, I think Martha Hart, I I think that Owen's wife is probably going to open the doors maybe. Um, for Owen Hart in WWE because mostly, yeah, because Vince is gone. It feels like there might be a bit of a dialogue starting, maybe. So we'll see. Look at my eyes. 
What do you see? CM Punk has no match in Philly. On January 27th, the world lost the opportunity to see an out of shape has been. Oh, so good. So good. That part was great. What an, another great promo tonight. I thought tonight fell short in several categories. It wasn't the greatest. Last week on Raw, I gave Monday Night Raw the best rating I've given it in a long time, a 7 out of 10. I don't think tonight was a 7. I thought tonight might have been maybe like a 6 out of 10, maybe. Um, maybe a 5.5 or a 6, but I'll, I'll go 6 out of the hype. Um, I love the Drew, the Drew line last week when Drew said... Uh, the Eminem thing, right? Hit me up just to chill. Your biggest fan, this is Phil or whatever. <laughs> I mean, bro, that was great. I love. I don't know. Drew Drew McIntyre's doing rhymes now. I don't know. He's 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 rhyming shit. It's funny to me. Good stuff. Super. I like chat it. Party. Jay and Joe's world. I was really hoping to hear that glass break tonight. You know. I think you'll see that at WrestleMania in some way or another, but I think people getting excited that, you know, Stone Cold and Cena were going to come out tonight to help Cody and them and stuff. I just think it's about, it's supposed to be about their story and what they're doing. And if you start bringing all those other people into it, it's kind of weird or whatever. So I, you know what I mean? I'm thinking that you're not going to quite I've been going get to wrestling that. shows for over 30 years. Never Doomed. in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. CM Punk has a cool Ramones shirt. Yes, he does. Shout out to CM Punk's Ramones shirt. Doomed, huh? Thanks for the three bucks. Um, and we're going to talk about CM Punk's interview in a few minutes, so stick around for that. I'm going to break down what I think about what he says. We're going to talk about how, how we've really lost a lot of respect for Tony Khan. We've really lost it. Listen, I love Tony Khan for bringing an alternative and giving us something to do during the times when WWE sucked. But now WWE's back on top again. It went it went WWE, NXT, AEW, and now it's WWE again. Who would have thought? And I'll fight people. I'll fight people over that. You know, you got to love it. When, when one's doing good and you're loving it and you bash the other one when it's doing bad... You know, people come at you that you're a WWE loyalist or people come at you that you're an AEW lover and you're a hater of the whatever. No, I just like I, I like to shit on stuff that wastes my time. And when stuff is good, I talk about how good it is. And when stuff sucks, I shit on it because it sucks. And you can deal with it because guess what? WWE was really good for a long time forever. And then NXT was better. NXT was better. And then AEW was better. Well, guess what? Now WWE is better. That's just the facts, in my opinion. That's how I feel. And it's not just how I feel. The trends, the stats, the ticket sales, the fan response, all that backs it up. When I thought NXT was amazing... It was doing the best it ever did and was selling out major arenas and had some of the best talent out there. The revenue backed it up. The viewership backed it up. All of that backed it up. And guess what? I thought it was the best. So I think I'm right. And when AEW was doing, I think, the best, AEW had full houses. AEW had sellouts or near sellouts. They weren't beating WWE in the ratings. You could make an argument that I wasn't right and the WWE was still better. Fine. If you want to go by my uh, what I'm saying. But at least there was a case to be made with a company hitting 1.1 million and 1 million viewership when WWE was going down to 1.4 million viewership and AEW was hitting 1.1 million. And they were getting close to that raw rating while selling out buildings. What is AEW doing now? Not selling out, not even close. The ratings, not close. And I think WWE is the best. And that's, and um, yeah, you know what? That's a Fairweather fan. You could say that's a, ban a bandwagon hopper. Maybe. 
but I don't think it's a bandwagon hopper because we're not talking about a football team, okay? That's a person who's like, well, I like the Patriots because they're winning. Well, now I like the Kansas City Chiefs because they're winning. You know, that's a scumbag. This isn't like that, though. I'm a wrestling fan over everything. I'm watching everything. And I'm going to follow and praise and like the thing that deserves to be followed, praised, and liked. And, yeah, CM Punk has been a liar at times, a scumbag type of person. Sure, CM Punk has been like that. But, but the guy will admit to being that. Even if he's wrong and even if I think CM Punk is wrong, the guy will still come out and say, hey, maybe I was a prick. But Tony Khan is sitting there like, oh, my life was in danger, and we have, but we have the safest company ever. Okay, so your life was in danger, but you've got the safest company ever. And guess what? From the outside looking in, it looks like somebody is afraid to run his own company and somebody's so much of a pussy that he can't keep these egos in check because he's afraid to lead. And we're going to talk about that with the CM Punk interview earlier. So I'm going to tell it like it is. I don't care how many AEW fucking fans want to kill my family because of what I'm saying. In fact, because I was probably an AEW fan before you were an AEW fan, right? And I was a WWE fan probably before you were born. <laughs> so you're probably some woke piece of shit who wants to suck Nyla Rose's fucking hole or whatever it is now. That's what you want to do. So I'll say whatever I want because I don't give a shit about butthurt WWE fans or about butthurt AEW fans. If it sucks... I'm going to tell you it is. It does. If it's good, I'll tell you it's good. That's all there is to it. How many times are you going to repeat that? That's why you watch That's why you watch the show. That's why you watch me. That's why you watch most people. Nobody wants you to, oh, please just say good things. Oh, you're not a fan. You're not a listener. You're a, you're a tribalist, hollow-minded piece of shit. That's what you are. I, and guess what? I still like watching AEW from time to time. I want AEW to be better and to be good. I really do. But I want it to be kind of shitty for a little while still because I want them to see. I want them to maybe start to realize maybe we're fucking idiots. Did you ever think about that, young bucks? Huh? Maybe you're idiots because why am I not on commentary? Why is Kevin... Why is... Why is Kevin Kelly fired? Why is the best commentator that you've had so far, besides when Jim Ross was on his game at the beginning, why is the best commentator fired? Why is your biggest draw gone? You ever think about that? That's right, AEW. It's because you're full of yourselves and you're wrong I hate to say it the guy hates me but Jim Cornette is right I always thought it wasn't fair I thought Jim Cornette unnecessarily hated on everything too much and I still think he does but man he has a lot of good points and they came to fruition about that company We're on the road to uh, we're on the road to WrestleMania. Great promo by Drew tonight. Shit bum. Stone Cold, The Rock, among others, were the top baby faces in the Attitude Era. Didn't get their asses beat back to back weeks and not even fight back. Um, I don't agree with that. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin was beat up multiple times before Cope Steve Phil. Stone Cold Steve Austin was beat up multiple times before WrestleMania 14. In fact, Stone Cold Steve Austin was um was not only beat up two times before WrestleMania by DX and Mike Tyson but um, at the DX public workout, I think they tied him to the ropes. 
And not only did they beat up Stone Cold Steve Austin, but they kissed him on the forehead. So I, I, listen, I'm glad you donated. Thank you for that. I love you, bro. But I don't, I don't think that's correct. I don't think that's correct at all. And I wish I had the video of the DX public workout, but for some reason, I, it's like you can't really find it on, um, you can't really find it anywhere. I don't know where the fuck it went. Like, We've got to find footage of it somewhere because it, they've deleted it almost everywhere, I feel like. A crowd of 15,000 showed up at the government center in Boston this past Thursday for DX's public workout. Um, Stone Cold got in the ring. DX beat the crap out of him. They tied him up in the ropes. Where's the shot of them tying him up in the ropes? Why isn't that played on the uh, on this video? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Why is there no footage of this almost anywhere? It was like a major thing that happened. They beat the crap out of Stone Cold. They made him look like an idiot kind of here. They tied him up in the ropes, and Mike Tyson and Shawn Michaels um, all proceeded to kiss Stone Cold. The knockout punch. Michael stepped in. Ex so not only did they beat him up several times before WrestleMania, they kissed him while he was tied up in the ropes. Executing a more humiliating tactic. I mean, there are several several other examples of this. You know, going uh, that we could get into. Um I think The Rock or Hulk Hogan, I believe Hulk Hogan when when did um when did Hulk Hogan run The Rock over with a truck? Cuz didn't The Rock get run down by Hulk Hogan in a semi truck? Before WrestleMania, is that am I wrong? That was um, I, I don't remember, but pr I'm pretty sure there's just so many examples that that show that that's not correct. Shit, bum. You know, if Roman, a guy who is an average wrestler at best and mitt on the mic at best, is considered the goat, it shows how weak this era of wrestling. Yeah, I mean, I just, Copes, Copesy to Phil, thanks for the $5 again and becoming a $5 ship on. Thank you, man. Yeah, I, I, I don't think, I mean, he's the, he's the GOAT of today. You know, I don't have a problem with calling him the GOAT, I guess, but of today, I mean, three years or whatever it's been. But again, it's just weird that Pat McAfee is sucking on him so much when the guy cheats every time he, you know, retains the belt, you know, and... um. And they should be playing that up more. They should be talking more about that. You know, Pat McAfee should be like, listen, this guy is the GOAT. There's no doubt about it. Roman Reigns, he's here. And he is the GOAT, man. Three years, this reign, everything that Roman's done. But it's also got to be said that Roman Reigns has found his way out of all those matches through some sort of nefarious means, Cole. You can't argue the fact that there's... There's like an asterisk on every single damn match this guy ever has. And then Cole could say, yeah, but the bottom line is he gets it done every time. You know, you got to respect that. And, you know, Pat McAfee would be like, well, I don't really respect it, to be honest, because it's not how he does it. But here at WrestleMania, if the bloodline wins, you know, on night one of WrestleMania, then he basically gets a free pass to do what he's had to sneakily do over the course of the past three years behind referees' backs when someone's not looking, a three-on-one, a two-on-one, a cheap shot, a weapon, something like that. And you're telling me at WrestleMania that after all that, he's going to be able to do that very thing that has gotten him out of so many matches and kept that belt around his waist so many times that he's just going to have all of that at his disposal without any consequences or worry of being disqualified. And Michael Cole could say, well, that's basically that's true. And you got to give it to him. 
How that that makes him even smarter. That's why this guy is a champ. You don't become a champion just because you're great. You don't become a champion just because you cheat. You don't become a champion. You don't stay champion for three years just because you. You know you got to be smart. And that's the thing that Roman has above everybody else. He's the most calculated, the most smart. He's got a plan, and the plan is already executed here for WrestleMania. He, This guy is somehow telling you what his plan is and getting you to agree to it. That's what he's done. Some would argue that Cody Rhodes may not be the sharpest knife in the draw for accepting this. You know, you could say all those things, and you could really break that all down. But they don't they don't do that. They just say Roman's amazing. Roman's great. Why don't they ever say, like, will he finally get what's coming to him? Why didn't they say, well, a lot of people were hoping that Roman finally gets what got what's coming to him at WrestleMania. But now if Roman wins on night one, he can just use what he's been using in matches sneakily for years. Like, I mean, there's so much to, to saying that. To show the Roman always gets out of it some way. But they don't want to do that. They want to literally put him over and pretend like he didn't cheat all those other times. Why? Why don't you want to get... No, label him. Label him what he is. A sneaky snake, but the smartest goat in the business. He's the goat because he's smart. Smarter than everybody else. And what, you know, the king of the jungle. The head of the table. Praise him like that. Praise him, but praise him while being real about what he is. When you praise Roman Reigns like he's, oh my God, how is he so good? That doesn't seem real to me. I don't believe it because I know that he's actually cheated a bunch to win and retain that belt. So when you just praise him like you can't believe how amazing he is, how could he be this good? I don't buy it because I'm like, I know how he could be this good. He cheated in every match. But he did it brilliantly, and it was smart. And he's controlled. Look at how he's controlled the bloodline. Look at how he's controlled his family. Look at how he's even controlling the rock, you could say. Look at how he's controlled the outcome of all these matches. Look at this planning. This man is the most brilliant man in wrestling to this day. That's why he's champion. It's not because he's the strongest. It's not because he's the fastest. It's not because he always has the best match out of anybody. It's because he's the smartest. And that's the most dangerous thing you can be in professional wrestling is the smartest. Why don't they why don't they build them that way so it's realistic to me? But whatever. It's just a gripe. You raised a piece of shit. Have you watched the Bray Wyatt documentary yet? Good God, no. I don't want to want to die, so I'm gonna not watch it. I don't I can't I can't take watching that right now. I love you know, rest in peace, I love Bray Wyatt. I still can't believe he's gone. But I can't do it, man. I've also had a just, I don't even, I don't know. Super chat party. WTF, the point is Vince. A wandy, oh my God. I haven't seen a wandy in forever. What the fuck the point is, Vince? I played that the other day. It's one of the best Tommy takes ever. A wandy. Thank you, Awandi. What's up, man? Shit bum! Joe, is there a scenario where you see Cena and Stone Cold getting involved on Sunday without making Cody look weak? Yeah, we talked about it the other day. I I, I said I, I really do think that Stone Cold and Cena and all those guys, they could show up. because it, And it wouldn't make them look weak because it would happen probably if Bloodline Rules happens. Girthquake416, thank you. Because they've got to do something where if the bloodline is out there, how do you even up the, the the deal? You know? So, maybe. 
And, and maybe and we've been talking about this for a long time. Remember, I've been saying this for a long time that like somebody would come out. We I said the Rock might come out. It would come out and and get rid of all the other people around the ring, and then Cody could win the match one on one. So I, I definitely do see a scenario where this could happen. I definitely could see, bam, the glass shatters. Out comes Stone Cold. He starts going at the bloodline. Bam, out comes Cena and all these people are coming out and they're beating up the bloodline and they end up they take a guy and each guy beats up a guy out of the ring and beats him down and they go into the crowd or they go backstage or where they just leave, you know, they take off. And, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh John Cena and maybe somebody else. Hell, maybe Hogan. Something like that. Where they all come out and they and they they beat up one of the bloodline members, you know Seth Rollins comes out maybe, I don't know. And uh, and then it and then it leaves, just Cody, and just Roman Reigns, and then Cody, within you know three minutes after that, Cody Rhodes wins one on one, legit. Wins the championship, or maybe then Seth shows up you think, to help Cody, and Seth turns on Cody. And then Roman Roman retains. Um, that would be the, the heel bad guy ending that could happen. Or Cody just, or Cody will win. And that way he didn't really get any help winning the match. He just won fair and square. And all those other guys helped make it even. And that's the answer to the to the bloodline rules, because it does feel like the bloodline rules is going to happen, and they're going to lose night one. So that that would be my prediction. I do I do think that they will get involved at WrestleMania. There's a possibility. Um, I don't think they should have been involved tonight or on Friday or any other night. I don't agree with that. Someone said that earlier, and I said no. Uh, but at WrestleMania, I've been saying that I think that that's a possibility for a while now, or at least last four, a couple times I've mentioned it over the last four weeks. Not a lot, but a couple times. So that's a possibility. Um, oh, what the fuck the point is, Vince, for a Wandy? I'm sorry. What the fuck the point is, Vince? What the fuck the point is, Vince? Well, now you're not allowed to say Vince because they blanket out everything, so I don't know. Shit bomb. Hogan's promo on X was good to meeting him on Zunda. Oh, nice. Have fun uh, meeting him. Alex, thank you for the $2. Um, tell him Joe Cronin Show loves him. I I grew up... I'm, I'm, I'm watching wrestling now because of Hogan. It wouldn't be... Um, Never would have caught my eye probably if, he, if I hadn't gotten into Hogan the way I did. Back in the day. Shit bomb. AW Dynamite Wednesday is at the Coup Center Worcester. AW Dynamite on Wednesday is at DCU Center in Worcester. It is? I didn't know that. Alex Oli, thank you, bro. I didn't even know that. God damn, I might have bought a ticket. Just for fun. I don't know, maybe I'll go. I had no idea. I wish I knew that earlier. I think someone told me that, but I forgot. I wish I knew that I've earlier. I've been going to wrestling on. shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. Look in my eyes. What do you see? CM Punk won't be at Philly. That bar from Drew was lethal. I can't <laughs> wait to see him win the championship. That Drew is cool. Seth is cringe. All face champs are cringe. JC from PA215. Thanks for the $3. Yeah, I kind of agree. Uh, yeah, I'm loving Drew right now. Drew's, Drew is killing it as a heel. Man, Drew is... I'm loving Drew. I'm loving it. That being said... Um, um, if Real American hits... I will go batshit. Yes, Derek Hans. I will go crazy. I will go crazy. Um, can you imagine if Dustin Rhodes was allowed to go to WrestleMania and Dustin Rhodes came out 
he came out to the American Dream Dusty Rhodes theme. Came out to the Common Man song. And he came out and whooped some ass. And they were like playing that fucking theme while Dustin Rhodes is like whooping ass. That'd be great. I mean, it'd be funny if he came out to Gold Dust too. It'd be better if he came out to Common Man. Oh God, I hope it's I hope it's a spectacle like that. I hope it's just crazy. Wouldn't it be great if Seth Rollins um maybe turned on Cody and everybody was out gone and now there was no one left to help Cody? Um but that's when Dustin comes out from the back and he's in a suit or something because he's in the back. And they fucking played like uh Dusty Rhodes theme. And Dustin whooped Seth Rollins' ass out of the ring. And then um it was now now it was just down to Roman and Cody. I don't know. Make it a crazy spectacle. Fuck it. I'm down with that. I really am. I'm even down with them all coming out and holding up Cody on their shoulders like like Bret Hart WrestleMania ten. I'm down, man. Make it a spectacle. Make it a spectacle. That being said, you guys have a good night, man. I, that's all I've got in me. I'm going to go back um, to being a peasant. And um, I don't know, man. I hope everybody has a good week and has a good night. And um, I may not see you guys again until... Uh, I may not see you guys again until, I don't know, maybe Friday night. I, I don't know. Um, but I hope you all are well. Thanks to everybody who uh, stopped by tonight and donated, became patron on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show, and everybody who's been uh, hanging around and, and had fun on Monetize This on Saturday. I know the show was kind of weird, and it didn't really go as well as we thought, and it was a little bizarre, but um, and uh, people are, you know, I'm sure Jake is really a, has been, was not happy with the way Luke spoke to him the other night, um, and, uh, you know, not a lot of it was very weird Saturday night. I'm sorry, but it still was really successful though. So it was weird, but it was just whatever. Um, but uh, I hope everybody had a good weekend, has a good week, and uh, I will catch you guys maybe Friday. I might put up, I might put some videos up during the day for everybody if I uh, have time or whatever. Um, but stay good, stay stay sexy like Jake. <laughs> um, stay safe, stay safe. Yeah, be careful out there. You might get hacked to death by somebody with the way this country is going. So, um, you know, we're we're seeing super chat. We're seeing party. the end of America, so enjoy it. Cody wearing old school bandage like his old man was a nice touch. Yeah, I like the old bandage like the old man. That's a great point, Haystacks. I didn't even think about that. Haystacks Monet, you're a beast, bro. Haystacks, thank you so much, dude, for the five dollar super chat. I know that my channel is uh, a small little piece of shit, but we try here. You know, we try a little bit. Thank you all for uh, coming on and clicking that like button. Obviously, got to get up early. Shit bum. Is there a WrestleMania out of nowhere preview? Uh, Alex Oli, thank you for the $2, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I guess uh, that's a good point. I actually forgot. Yeah, we're probably going to do an Out of Nowhere before Friday. I didn't think about that. That's true. I didn't even think about it. Me and Jake are probably going to do a uh, an Out of Nowhere uh, WrestleMania preview. Probably. I didn't even think about that. I really didn't think about that. Maybe Wednesday. Maybe I won't be going to AW. Thank you, Alex. Show Roz back.
I don't know why I did that. Andre Lavandero in the chat. Look at him. Cody should wear polka dots. Uh, that'd be crazy. Uh, there's no record to beat of Hogan's. You know? There's no Hogan record. Everybody's still saying that, but there's no... There's no Hogan record to beat. Hogan's like number three on the list. But maybe, I mean, unless everybody's just saying, well, they want him to pass Hogan, who's number three. I guess, maybe. Uh, this is the Joe Cronin Show. Hope you guys subscribe. Uh, and we'll talk about the CM Punk thing tomorrow. I didn't get to it tonight, but uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll play some clips. There's some great takes from the CM Punk thing. No doubt about it. God damn, did he lambaste Tony Khan. Did he for president. Hey, Diablo 4 PTR tomorrow for all you dorks out there. <laughs> 